Hi, today I want to share with you a very simple and easy technique for stitching together multiple images into uh, one panoramic image. Now, it, it's important to note that this is a technique that works regardless of file type. You can see here I have a raw file, uh, but it works just as well as if you're you know, shooting JPEGs from your cell phone or, or whatever. Uh, with the current version of Lightroom, it actually does a very good job of dealing with differences in exposure and in focus and so for this particular series here you can see I've got six highlighted here in green um, those are the ones we're going to put together what I did is I just stood in an arc and kind of rotated it around a little bit we need to have a little bit of overlap in these images for it to work but uh, other than that it is very very easy to do um, so again um, with the focusing thing what I wanted to point out is that images where there's not something near in the foreground uh, we, the focal distance was further back because of course this tree was right here in the front um, it locked in on focus for that and so what it'll do is when it, when it put together this panorama it'll actually combine the sharpest parts of each image uh, assuming there's enough overlap again into uh, one overall panorama so the, the key here is uh, first of all you want to select your series so shift click on the last one after clicking on the first one if you happen to have any sort of a vignette this is a, a good time to make sure you get rid of that vignettes will give little tweaks in exposure that are going to be harder for uh, Lightroom to, to deal with uh, the easiest thing to do is turn on auto sync here um, there's two places you're going to want to look. First of all is enable profile corrections and you can see how that kind of stretches it out and, and lightens the corners. And then the second place is here in effects. You may have a post crop vignette. Um, it's okay to have very very slight but the easiest option is just to have this as a zero. Once you have that all selected you want to turn your auto sync off and then when your mouse is over the main picture window right click do photo merge and then do panorama. Now the window will pop up and it doesn't take too long to make the preview. You can see here you have three different options. Uh, generally speaking the spherical is going to do a pretty good job for you. There's really no harm in trying these other ones, it just takes a few moments for it to, to come together. What I'd really like to point your attention to are these two particular options. Auto crop, um, so you can see this white part here is is part of the image where there was no uh, pixel coverage and so um, if we auto crop what we're going to do is just cut that out straight across and I'd like you to see exactly here in the middle we're cutting up part of the tree so that's not exactly ideal there's clearly plenty of, of, of sky above that uh, that's where the boundary warp comes in if you is it if you turn it to the right or push it to the right you can see how it kind of warps that edges and now sometimes if you go all the way over to 100 it looks pretty decent which I think is the case here um, what you'll find is that in um, other times you'll have kind of a, a fisheye effect where the horizon line gets gets warped and in which case you'll need to back off um, once you do that you know even if you go up you know say 50 percent you still have plenty of white spots then if you do the crop you'll see you'll have more room um, in the middle of the image and so that works out pretty well so again I think for this one just going to 100 works pretty well um, we'll go ahead and click merge now as it puts these together it puts it into a .gng file format and uh, the DNG is another raw format and so because I'm starting with raw images here um, that means that all of the the tonal controls that I have available as a raw format is going to carry over into the panoramic image. I'm going to go ahead and pause while this finishes creating the panorama. It'll just take a moment longer. Okay, so it's only about another 20 seconds after that. Um, depending on your view, it might be immediately next to it, or if uh, you're doing this after you had just brought in a, a series of, of images as a new import then it might be at the end of the series. Um, either way, it, because these all had the green label, you can see that that carried through here. And where each of these images were uh, 620 by 4480 pixels long, now you can see that we have uh, one very wide and a little bit shorter because we, um, again, we cropped in a little bit. Again, um, from this point, we can we can add any of these effects. Maybe a little bit of a vignette here. Uh, maybe we want to um, bring up the shadows a little bit. 
maybe uh, bump the contrast. Um, all the tools that were available before are still available here, and uh, that's a very powerful reason to uh, start with these with a raw file format. The other thing we might like to do is tweak the dehaze just a little bit, and uh, we, we get a little bit more definition in the sun. Um, hopefully you can see this is a very simple and straightforward technique to use. I encourage you to uh, give it a try next time you're out and, and shooting a nice wide landscape that will benefit from a panorama. Let me know if you have any questions.